What is Boyle's Law? In this video, I'm gonna go through the graph, a particulate view, a model. You can get access to these notes. They're in the description below. You can print them back to back, and then you can put the sample problems that we're gonna work on on the inside, as well as we're gonna work through two of those sample problems, like I just said, one like this, and then another one that you're gonna try, which is this one, okay? So let's go through the graph, the particulate view, and the model first, and then we'll do the sample problems, okay? So this is what Boyle's Law looks like on a graph. And what a scientist does is they keep a sample of gas. I'm just gonna pretend that this is my sample of gas. They keep that sample of gas at a specific temperature and they do not change the moles. So for example, when I move this, that's gonna be my kinetic energy, um, which is one half MB squared, okay? And I'm gonna keep that temperature the same. And I'm not gonna change the number of particles when I change the uh, volume. So what happens is at a low volume, which I have maybe right now, my pressure is high, meaning the collision with the walls of the container. And if I decrease um, the pressure, the volume would have to go up or if I have the volume go up, which is what I'm kind of modeling here, and I keep again the moles and, and the temperature the same, what's gonna happen is if the volume goes up, the pressure should go down. So there should be fewer collisions with the walls of the container. And that's what's meant by an inverse or an indirect relationship. It's when what happens to the one variable is the opposite to the other. So again, as the volume went up, my pressure actually went down. So what does that look like um, drawn out? So if you have this set of notes already, this is actually on the inside already. So you may wanna add some arrows showing that the kinetic energy, that's the temperature, is not changing. So you draw these little arrows about all the same length approximately. And then, on average, um, and then you want to do that for both. What changed was if I pull this piston back and I make it, you know, become a larger volume, so this would be the original, this is the final, then the pressure should go down on this little pressure gauge. Again, the moles stay the same, so you'll see the same number of particles drawn in each. You'll notice that I put all of those little red particles from the smaller container to the bigger container. And that's what means it means to have the moles constant. All right, let's get to the sample problems then. So I'm just gonna have you look at those one more time there. And then here is our first sample problem. Okay, so let's do this one together and then I'll have you try the other one on your own. You can pause the video and get the answer. So here is my initial pressure. So I'm gonna kind of pull this out so we have those uh, gas law formulas. So pressure one is 3.62 ATM. Sometimes people will use a little I right there for initial. And then my initial volume on my first volume, they might put like a little I or a one, okay? Um, not just a really tall one, but that's okay. My initial volume was 9.37 liters. Now, kind of like my example, but in the opposite. You know, what if I took these gas particles and I decreased the volume to, in this case, 5.40 liters? I want to know this new or this final, sometimes they'll use Fs this new final pressure. And I do need to have the same units for the pressure needs to be the same units, in this case ATM, and the volume has to be the same units. Then you can use this P1, V1 equals P2, V2 equation called Boyle's Law, that relationship that you have. Now, I wanna isolate for just P2, so before I do anything, I'm gonna you know, add, it, add those variables in. I wanna get that P2 all by itself, so what I'm gonna do is divide both sides, so you take your equation, and you divide both sides by the variable you wanna kind of move over so that you isolate for just the one you're looking for. And what that means is then these V2s are kind of canceled and you're left with P2 on this side and then you have P1, V1, those again, remember your initial and then V2. So now I've isolated for the variable I'm trying to find. I'm gonna keep it in ATMs or I'm gonna you know, not change that unit. So pressure two is gonna be P1, which is 3.6 to ATM, okay, so I'm just kind of doing these on the right side because that's how most people would look at these. And then I'm gonna multiply that by V1, which is 9.37 liters, okay? And then I'm gonna divide that all by the new volume, which is 5.40 liters, okay? So if you kind of look here, remember, we predicted, again, using kind of that graph, think about that graph, we made the volume go you know, down so the pressure should go up. So our final answer, I'm just gonna show you on the calculator with you here. 
So you'll take your 3.62, you'll multiply it by your 9.37, and then you'll divide that by your 5.40, okay? And you get 6.28, let me check one more time. So 3.62, I think I might have typed something wrong, 9.37 divided by 5.4, and I get um, 6.28. Eight, you know, one, three, seven, but you can't keep all that. So for my um, significant figures, I'm going to just keep three because all of these have three significant figures. So my P2 is going to be just 6.28 ATM. And I'm just going to check that one more time. 3.62, 9.37, just because I feel like I pressed something wrong because I did this problem before the video. But nope, I'm getting that numerous times. Okay. So that was our first one, and then it's always good to kind of box out your answer, and it makes sense that the pressure has gone up because the volume went down. All right, so now it's your turn. Here's your practice problem for you to try. So I'll give you a chance to kind of write that down and give it a shot, and then I'm going to reveal the answer. So here is the answer. So I had to convert the units before I could solve. So I had 650 millimeters of mercury, MMHG, and then we changed it to a 1.2 ATM, and that is increased because you have to do this conversion. And I have a video on how to do gas law conversions if you, if you need it, or gas, I shouldn't say gas pressure conversions. So you can do your gas law conversions. So you're going to divide by 760 to get this pressure, and that's why it did go up to 1.2. I carried an extra sig fig. I had to take my equation, and again, I had to isolate this time for V2, okay? And keep in mind the pressure went up, so the volume should go, in this case, down. So take your 0 0.855, you multiply it by your 220, and then divide by 1.2. Now I carried an extra sig fig, so then in the end I have to just round to 160. Um, or if you like scientific notation, it would just be 1.6 times 10 to the 2 uh, milliliters. There could even be a chance that maybe they want you to convert this to liters, um, and then you'd have to do a volume conversion. So I'm just going to add that in just in case. So what if they, you know, your book or somebody asked you to convert this to liters? Then what you would do is you would divide by a thousand milliliters and convert it to one liter. So you'd take your 160. I'll just kind of show you here 160, and we're going to divide by a thousand. I wouldn't drag the decimal. I would actually just move it over if you know how, or actually show your work. So then it could be 0.16 uh, liters, uh, 0.16 liters, if, if for some reason, you know, the book actually wanted the answer in liters. All right, well, I hope that helped you understand Boyle's Law and kind of tune into the other videos I'm gonna hopefully be making on Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, and Gale Sack. And again, um, also Dalton's Law and combined and ideal are all on here. And then again, on the back, if you print it double-sided, you have your kinetic molecular theory, you have your gas variables. And like I said, on the inside are gonna be your graphs and your uh, particulate views, and then room for you to put an example problem down at the bottom. All right, good luck, chemists.